train number 602 for Ocean by the morning at 793 p.m. Union Station was the last of the major rail depots, the last uh, terminals. But by the 30s, the automobile and the airplane already started to compete with rail traffic. And this was definitely one of the last of the kind of the transcontinental railroad method of traveling across country. Who wouldn't want to spend three days on a train, right? It might seem that Union Station being here, right next to Alvaro Street, it seemed like this was the likely birthplace of the city of Los Angeles. And it was, and it wasn't. Because this was a replacement to the original Transcontinental Rail Depot, which was in downtown near today's Skid Row. Once LA started to grow, this area got a lot less action. This isn't even where I'm heading today, but I guess uh, it was along the way, so I thought I'd stop in. Pretty cool cause because the last few times I've been there it's always been empty and uh, it's nice to see on a holiday weekend people are taking advantage of it. Gas is not really that expensive here. That's just this one gas station. But people still buy gas here so uh, what do I know? I bet you a lot of people buy one gallon of gas. Off of the distance is where we're headed. Alright. 
So about a block and a half away from Union Station is one of my favorites. The arguable inventor of the French dip. I spilled it myself. <laughs> oh my goodness, it never fails. I go into a place like that completely lethargic and then come out emerging as a human being. There's my lift scooter I was looking for. <laughs> All right, let's see how quickly we can regret getting on one of these things. I do not ride on the sidewalks, but these sidewalks are empty. So there's exceptions to every rule. I can see that this is just gonna be a big giant waste of disc space. citrus trees. It used to be an old rail yard. It had like years of cleaning up of the toxic pollutants. But this is called uh, the cornfield because apparently the seeds used to leak out of the boxcars that were stored here. And uh, corn grew and that's why it got called the cornfields. This is yet another thing that's really cool that's on the way that we are not going to be spending much time, so I'm just gonna zip past here. It 
looks like we're going over the LA River and over a bunch of tracks. One of these days, the, the plan is to have a whole bunch of parks all in the area. I guess kind of kind of mimicking that. But yes, there's the LA River. Don't let anyone tell you that it's not the LA River because it absolutely is. Water is not naturally occurring. Well, some of it is, but most of it comes from a water treatment plant. Well, my lift decided it's not going to scoot anymore, so I guess the rest is on foot. Ah, shit. All right, well, now i got to go return it. Otherwise, it's going to give me a $25 fee. Piece of shit. Come on, give me some juice. There we go. Come on. Juice, juice. There we go. I dumped this piece of shit off on the other side of the bridge, I guess. All right, well, mental note. Don't cross the river with your lift scooter. Let's see. Hopefully I'm back in the acceptable jurisdiction. There we go. Right. Seven bucks. Seven bucks? Are you fucking kidding me? driving his car. You driving your car? So it's about four o'clock in the afternoon on a Monday, but it is President's Day, so we probably had about 25% more cars on a normal day. It's usually moving through here, but kind of like this, just like molasses. Hey, they're open. Well, two beers into it, I realized that I had an objective that I was supposed to get to. And here it is, almost dark. And I'm about to be playing around in the dark in the hills next to the freeway. 
which is kind of good because part of what I was looking to do requires some darkness. So let's hoof it. That's where you would get your shoe shined. I know what that is. It's not open. This is Lincoln Heights. This is the lesser known neighborhood surrounding downtown Los Angeles. It does feel very secluded. And it doesn't look like the neighborhood's changed a whole lot, except for where we're going right now. Hello, coppers. Abuela. It's amazing how many Yoshinoyas were built in and still remain in the city of Los Angeles. Has anyone ever eaten in a Yoshinoya? Most people inside have, I guess. Looks like one of the really old, almost original Jack in the Boxes. <laughs> That's right. little houses turn of the century 1910 thereabouts this used to be the end of the main road into town this turns into San Fernando Road which used to be the main highway highway US 99 eventually would go over the mountain pass over the grapevine go through Bakersfield, Fresno, all the way up north. That was called the Inland Route, and the Coastal Route, which was El Camino Real, which was originally built as Highway 101. And more recently, people's Wazes tend to take them down San Fernando Road to avoid the five during Dodger game day. I became intimate with San Fernando Road because I used to take, what was it, 497? Something like that. This was the bus that went down San Fernando Road all the way to Burbank. These apartments are more recent arrivals that came with the light rail that came through here in 2003. The tracks here were originally used by the Southwest Chief to Chicago. Southern Pacific abandoned the railroad in the 90s and relinquished it to Metro and they built this light rail.
well, was going to wait for a train, but time is of the essence. We're losing daylight. That's the namesake for this freeway, the Arroyo Seco. Oh, we're losing sunlight. All right, carry on. for another day. No time for Highland Park today. We are finally changing our trajectory to go back towards downtown. All the buses and everyone funnels on because Figaro doesn't go all the way through. You have to get on the freeway and that probably explains why this route is still in operation. And one of the reasons why you can miss it so easily is because there's not really very many people. In fact, I, I don't think Aside from a handful of times, for the most part, there's never anyone there, so you wouldn't even know there's a sidewalk. And something that's very exciting to me is that they decided when they opened up this new bridge that they were going to install a roundabout. And so far, I mean, it looks like it's functioning just fine. Ain't it cute with their little American signs? There are hardly any roundabouts in the United States. And it seems like recently a lot of cities are experimenting with them and they all kind of put their own little spin on it. So these bridges are part of what was the first real urban freeway. But it was built in two segments. This bridge over here was built in the early 30s. And that carried Figueroa Avenue. And just a couple of years later, they added the other carriageway, which covered, so instead of holding both lanes of traffic on this side, it was now split. Believe it or not, this is where we're going. Let's check it out. So I've never been up here, so I'm really excited. I'm genuinely excited right now. I am super stoked right now.
horses. Awesome. It's my first time here, but this is a this is a must see. I am having such a good time up here. You get that one weird moment of silence. This was built in the early 30s and it carried both the northbound and the southbound traffic. So all of this, this was like a proto-freeway. There was no such thing as a freeway. There was no such thing as urban design. And what this is, uh, the style is uh, if you, I know they rebuilt the uh, California Incline in Santa Monica, but it's, very, very similar. It's actually uh, almost identical to uh, up by Big Sur, those bridges, those art, giant iconic arch bridges. Same style. is is probably in the 40s maybe the very early 40s uh, or late 30s uh, they probably someone complained that this new freeway the Arroyo Seco Parkway with limited access uh, no facilities for pedestrians that's my best guess uh, probably what I usually do is I usually start reading up on the place after I visited but at this time it's just a curiosity because the start of the automobile revolution, which in its infancy happened when this freeway opened in the 1940s, they paid very little consideration to pedestrians. This is my second person. So, a couple of people. I bet you if I stand here for like three seconds, someone's gonna honk. Why would you not honk at me? Really? I'm actually a little impressed by I guess people are staring at their phones instead I don't know you really should honk at me it does look like I'm in the middle of the freeway That is really cool. I could probably hang out there for about an hour straight. So, second curiosity is what's at the top of these stairs? Is that focused? All right, well, anyway. Let's go. Oh, dude, it gets better. This was the more direct route as opposed to actually where I just went over with the with the electric scooter. That was the original way to Pasadena. And in fact, they still see the street Pasadena Avenue. So you think about it, this was opened up in 1931 and within a decade, which isn't that long, just think that this is 10 years ago from today was the year 2010. So if you think about it, growth was so exponential that they started with an upgraded road and immediately had to upgrade it to a freeway. It's very weird up here. This, there's, uh, you know, 
know, there's a little bit of litter, not, a, not an insane amount, but where I come from, it's not typical to allow people to walk for prolonged stretches of time next to a dirty highway. I mean, it's actually a little bit, if anything were to happen to you up here, it's actually pretty, pretty fucked up that you'd be right next to hundreds of people going past you every minute and uh, no one would even know anything was wrong. I love holes in fences, so let's get over and see what's doing over here. So if I'm not mistaken, I think this last like couple of feet was added on kind of recently. I think they just added the sidewalk, but I never, uh, never had the privilege of going on this beforehand. So it's kind of hard to tell, but you see that ridge over there and there's another ridge over here. This was once a valley, a little valley, a little arroyo, and this whole area is really kind of the base of Chavez Ravine. All right, well, there's an encampment down there, so I don't want to, I don't want to mess around, but I would like to get to this tunnel face and just kind of watch my feet. Oh my god, I'm getting vertigo. This is crazy. I'm on the <laughs> I'm on the top of the tunnel. Wow, this is crazy. Look at this, there's like no protection. Oh my God. Wow, that is crazy. I have always wanted to come up here. All right, well, now that we've got our fill, this is good, we're right on schedule. I didn't want to be here in the pitch black, but everything else is pretty easy from here on out. Oy. All right, see, it's never the destination, it's always the journey, remember that. So that was tunnel number one. That was a cut and cover tunnel. That was a cheater cut tunnel because there wasn't really enough dirt. Once they dug the tunnel, it's pretty much all the dirt was gone. So they made the tunnel anyway for aesthetic purposes. So this isn't on the official trail, but it looks like a likely substitution. Oh shit, all right. Well, apparently this is a thing. I can see the word is already out. All right, cool.
I don't even know. I don't even know where this is. I didn't know that bridge over the freeway just led straight to a park. Elysian Park is elusive to me. It's like, you know, I've been to a couple places where it's like, obviously that's Elysian Park. But then there's all of these little odds and ends. Like, this is Elysian Park. And I would never have even known it. That's pretty cool. It's even better when you're not really expecting it. I did not expect to come up here and see anything. I can't even begin to say how amazing this is. I mean, I'm seeing parts of the city that I've never seen before. Usually it's like Hollywood Hills and, you know, miles and miles away. And it gets so quiet all of a sudden. Look at this, this is fucking badass. Let's see if there's anything else. I assume that there's another entrance to the park somewhere around here. What's that? Is that like Frisbee golf or something? Did I stumble upon the Frisbee golf course? Oh yeah. I don't know. That guy doesn't look like a frisbee golfer, though. But I don't even know what a frisbee golfer looks like. It is funny. There's uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm one of them. There's uh, lots and lots of males uh, walking around unescorted with like their hands in their pockets, just kind of like whistling and doo doo doo. So I'm not sure what that's all about. These cool eucalyptus trees. Um, I could look at a map, you know, I kind of purposefully, I don't really, I don't really fuck with my phone all that much when I'm out because, like, when I first started exploring, like, on my own, like, just going off into the world, oh, that's beautiful behind there, Jesus Christ, maybe I should shut up and just, um, when I first got into the world, uh, before smartphones, you know, when the, when the iPhone come out, 2009 or something. So anyway, there, there wasn't that long ago you didn't have your map on you or your phone on you. Like, it's actually more fun, in my opinion, to unplug and like um, the first time I went to, uh, or the, the last time I went to Europe, which is like 10 years ago, um, I didn't have any data connection. And, uh, and it, it was it was so much fun just not knowing where we're going, you know. Back then you stayed in hotels and not Airbnbs, so uh, there was, you just go into a hotel and you get a room. And uh, everyone's, it's just too connected. It's just, 
It's so much more fun, I promise you. It's so much more fun to just walk into a place and not research it and not, not know everything. It's so much fun to not know. And sometimes you have a not so great experience, but the, the good experiences that come out of that type of mentality, it more than makes up for it. All right, well, I'm gonna actually have to go against my own advice is because I don't know where I'm going. And I need to figure out where I'm at so I can go home. We are on Park Row. All right, so we'll find it. Burp. Uh, a little something on Chavez Ravine because we are right there but um, yeah, we are in Chavez Ravine territory and uh, there's a little neighborhood right over here that will, oof, that will hopefully give us a good explanation of what it was like to live in Chavez Ravine prior to Dodger Stadium. All right, back on the beaten path. Moving on. So I'm a major fan of holes in the fences. And uh, trespassing, I guess I just kind of suspend disbelief. But this used to be, I know this for a fact, but this was originally a sanctioned staircase so if it was good for them in 1931 then it's definitely good to, good for us right now Oh my god, are you kidding me? So that road used to come under the bridge. So when they built this, you had the, <laughs> the option of uh, slipping on to the northbound. Dude. So this is the safest way across the freeway. <gasps> I can touch the ceiling with my hands, it's like seven feet. Well, this might be a good early escape because if we can get to Chinatown from here, Actually, I'm gonna sit here and wait for a couple of people to get on the freeway because this is always amusing. This is a freeway on-ramp, by the way. Wait for it. Wait for it. I hope he peels out. That would be fantastic if he peels out.
Yeah, that's the off ramp too. And there is no end, no end of places to explore around here. There's hidden staircases. I actually have a book that I'm about to crack open. Uh, someone gave me as a housewarming gift nine years ago. And I'm gonna go check out some of these hidden staircases. It's like the 10th person I've passed in the last two hours that was smoking marijuana. I wonder if anything's open. I'm hungry. All the sightseeing is wonderful, but man, my feet are getting sore. And we just missed the Gold Line train. There was a bus I could have jumped on. All these options are, are just whizzing past. And I'm stuck walking. just like a couple of miles, maybe, maybe about four or five miles walking, but I guess the, the pit stop for the beers halfway through probably didn't help things out very much. Overall, the objective was to get to the staircase in the middle of the freeway and mission accomplished. That was fun. That was some place I've never been, so I look forward to going to many other places I've never been. What the hell is going on over here? What is this? Oh, the dragon is, is misting. Okay. So anyway, next time, next weekend, uh, I'm gonna do this a weekly thing. I don't have any feedback, I don't have any followers, I don't have anything. I'm just basically just a tree falling in the woods at this point. So uh, I'm gonna keep it up for a couple more weeks and see if I get any feedback, anyone kind of catching on, anyone interested in what I'm doing. Um, otherwise, I'll just uh, piss off and go back to work. There, am I, am I in focus? Yeah, anyway, well, battery's dead, so 
Um, that's about it. Goodbye.